I think to the detriment of who they really are. Rather than a person's nature, this is the real person in who you are. Ruben said to them, shed no blood. Good evening, this is Pastor Alex of the Redeemed Christian Church of God Joint Hairs Connection. You are welcome to our weekly TV program where we share the deep truths of the Word of God based on the revelation by the Spirit of God. And I congratulate you for being with us today and I pray the Lord will immensely bless you with what will be shared tonight in Jesus' name. The topic which we will be discussing about today is called living in two worlds. Living in two worlds. Many people are not aware that actually we live in two worlds. There are so many issues that affect us in life which we do not even understand why and how they happen to us. But I pray that by the end of today's teaching, you'll be able to have a revelational knowledge as to what this world entails and how we human beings live in two worlds. We begin by letting us know there are two worlds, spiritual world and the physical world or natural world. People are mainly abreast of the physical or the natural world. They seem to be oblivious or ignorant of the fact that there exists another world alongside this, the natural world which we live in. And in fact, the other world which is the spiritual world rules over the natural world. The spiritual world is the one that actually determines what goes on in this physical or natural world which we live. As I said, there are two major worlds which we live in, the physical and the spiritual world. The spiritual world is the world that is inhabited by spirit beings, while the natural world or the physical world is inhabited by human beings or animal. As I've said, there are two world there are also two kingdoms and the first kingdom is the kingdom of god while the second kingdom is the kingdom of satan some people don't want to hear that name but that is the reality there are two kingdoms that rules everywhere whether physical spiritual heaven or earth the first kingdom is the kingdom of god and the second is the kingdom of Satan or kingdom of darkness while the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light. And some people might be wondering how come the second kingdom, the kingdom of Satan exists? How did it come about? Can we open our Bible to Isaiah 14? Isaiah 14 and I will read from verse 12. Isaiah 14 from verse 12 reads, How you are falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning how you are cut down to the ground you who weaken the nations for you have said in your heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the cloud i will be like the most high Yet you shall be brought down to shore, to the lowest depth of the pit. Praise the Lord. Initially, there was only one kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. But a time came in heaven that the devil rebelled against God. He disobeyed God. He wanted his own throne to be even higher than the throne of God. And because of this rebellion that was found in in, in, in the devil, he was not the devil then, he was called Lucifer. He was the morning star. He was the head of the music group in heaven. He was the head of the choir, so, so to say. He was the leader of the worship team in heaven. And he was so beautiful and pride entered into him. And he said he wanted his throne to be higher than God. And because of this rebellion, God had to cast him into this world. And that was how the devil came into this world. And he didn't live alone. He left with one third of the angelic being 
which were with God, and those angelic beings became demons and came down to this world with, with, with the devil. And so the devil now established his own kingdom alongside the kingdom that was already existed before, which is the kingdom of God. That was how we now have two kingdoms existing. The kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light, and the kingdom of devil, which is the kingdom of darkness. This consists of the devil himself, which is Satan, alongside one third of the angelic beings which were with God before, and this now became his demons. These are the people he uses to perpetrate a lot of havoc and evil which he does here on earth. For you to understand what a kingdom means, kingdom basically means the domain of a king. So wherever there is a kingdom, it presupposes that there must be a king. In the kingdom of God, God is the king and is the ruler over all, including the kingdom of darkness. Praise the Lord. Uh, God Almighty is a sovereign God and he rules over all. Praise the Lord. But the devil has his own kingdom and his courts, who are his demons. And the devil, unlike God, is not omniscient, is not omnipresent, and is not all powerful, is not all knowing. The devil all only uses his demon, he places them in strategic places and he uses them for information or networking. He's not everywhere at the same time and he's not all powerful, he's not almighty. Our God is the almighty God and he rules over all. Praise the Lord. But for the sake of today, I want you to know that we live in two kingdoms. There are two kingdoms and there are two worlds, the world of, the, of darkness and the world which is being ruled by God, which is the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And I want you to also note something here. In Revelation 12, from verse 7, I'm going to read quickly. Revelation 12, from verse 7, just to portray what I said earlier. On. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angel fought with the dragon, that's the devil. And the dragon and his angels fought. The angel of the dragons are the, his demons. Those are the fallen angels that left heaven with him, that was banished from heaven alongside with, with him. Verse 8, But they did not prevail, praise the Lord, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of hold called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the dead. Therefore rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that it's time, that he has a short time. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Primarily, this earth was not made for the devil. This earth was made for the sons of God, for the child of God, Adam. The earth was made for human beings and not for devil. But because of the re rebellion of the devil, he was cast into this earth. And the Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of this earth. So we now understand that it was not the will of God to create devil. Some people will say, oh, if God is so powerful, if God is so loving, how come he created the devil? God did not create devil. God created Lucifer. It was the rebellion of Lucifer that turned him to devil. Lucifer was good before. Before sin was found in him. Before pride was found in him. Before rebellion set in. It was the act of sin and the rebellious act of Lucifer that turned him to devil. And that was why he was banished and cast to the earth. And since then, he decided to begin to mess up the work of God. He knew God loves man and he wants to destroy everything that God loves. 
Praise the Lord. So this was how the kingdom of darkness came into being. Praise the Lord. Well, I want us to know, I want you to know also that there are two bodies. Just as you have two walls and also you have two kingdoms, there are two bodies. We have what we call a celestial body and we also have a terrestrial body. I'm going to define them quickly. A celestial body are angelic body. These are not natural body. These are spiritual body. While the terrestrial body is the physical human body which you and I carry on the outside. Praise the Lord. But I want you to note one thing that man basically is not just this physical body which is the terrestrial. It's also a spirit being. But for you to understand what I was telling you, what I'm saying when, when I said we have two bodies, celestial and terrestrial. Let's open our Bible to 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 40. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 40. He said, There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is a glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in corruption. It is sown in, in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Praise the Lord. We have two bodies. There is a natural body and there is also a spiritual body. But as I said, I want you to know that man basically is not just this body, this flesh that we see. But predominantly people are so concerned with the outward, with the body. And they lay less emphasis on the real being that they have, on the spirit being that they are. Man is spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. I'm going to repeat that. This is very profound. Man basically is spirit. He's a spirit being. He has a soul. That soul consists of his intellect, his emotions, and his will. It is in the realm of the soul of man that man makes a decision. Oh, I'm going to wear this jacket and I'm not going to wear that particular jacket. I'm going to go to so-so place and not a particular place. That is where he makes his decision, his will. That's where he has his emotion. That's where he could feel hot, he could feel happy. And that's where he also exhibits intellect. That's where he can reason, he can think. Praise the Lord. But that is not all that man is. Man is primarily a spirit being who has a soul and lives in a body. The body is basically like a cloth. It's like a jacket that I'm putting on. And a time will come, the man himself is going to drop the jacket. He's going to leave that coat. It's like when I get home now and I undress, I change from this coat to another cloth. That is how man is going to be. And then they say the man is dead. Man never dies. Praise the Lord. Man is created in the image of God. And since God does not die, man cannot die. Man is a being that's, that will live for all eternity. But where that man lives in all the eternity depends on his relationship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you can open with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, just to let you know, all I've been saying concerning that man is a spirit. Genesis 1 verse 26, praise the Lord. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bed of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy th creeping things that creeps on the earth. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image. Since God is a spirit, it presupposes that God, that God can only create man in his spiritual image. A spirit God cannot create man 
in anything less than his spirit nature. Praise the Lord. He said, let us create man in our own nature. Amen. He said, let us create man. If you look also into John 4, John chapter 4, verse 24. I'll read for us quickly. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. Please, I want you to note that. The God we serve, our God, the almighty God, is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You cannot worship God in spirit if you are not spirit yourself. You see, the, the, the computer say garbage in garbage, and you cannot give what you don't have. For you to be able to worship God in spirit, it means you are primarily a spirit being. The Bible says God is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. So we are not the physical body that we see. But it is a, an unfortunate thing that people put more emphasis, they place too much emphasis on the body, on the outwardness of them. Something they are going to cast away very soon. Even if they don't want to put the body away, the body, after a while, is going to shut down. Praise the Lord. Because that is the way it was made. The body was created from the dust, and to the dust it will, remain, it will return. When you see a young lady be, be, before the mirror, she, she, she doesn't mind spending 30 minutes, one hour, in front of the mirror, embellishing this body, painting the face, screaming. I'm not against that. That is good. But the person, tell the person to just study the Word of God for 10 minutes or 5 minutes. You see that person struggling. That person getting tired, getting weak. The same person that was not tired, Panna beating her face, pardon my word, polishing the face for one hour in front of the mirror. Such a person cannot even sit down to read the Bible. The Bible that was going to feed the spirit, which is the food for the spirit. So you see people walking around, the, the, the body is full, the body is fresh, the body is radiating, while the spirit is famished, the spirit is weak. The spirit is like a skeleton. The spirit is begging for food, which is the word of God. So I pray from today, our focus will begin to change. Rather than putting too much emphasis on this body, we will begin to look inward and begin to feed our spirit man. Praise the Lord. Because we are basically spirit men. And it is a tragedy. You begin to feed something of less importance. You leave the main, the major thing. I pray by this reason of this preaching today our focus will change and god will help us in jesus name i will see you after this short break god bless you i love london there's loads to see and plenty to do. You can go shopping, enjoy art, go to the theatre, or just grab a bite to eat. Plus, it's a great place to study in the open spaces, all with excellent transport links. But where do you stay to enjoy all of this? Well, I stay at the Stay Club. The Stay Club is really fun. Cheers. It's close to central London. Thanks and you can stay as long as you like. It's a great place to meet new friends. Do you mind if we take one of those? Good. <laughs> Let me show you upstairs. The Stay Club is super safe and extremely clean. <laughs> I mean extremely clean. So who stays at the Stay Club? Well, students, young professionals, handsome. And people who come from all over the world just to have a good time. Hey girls! <laughs> now let me show you my room. This is my room. And my flatmate April. In here we have our own shower, our own cooking space, free Wi-Fi, a large desk and the beds. I love the beds. As you can see, it's quite cosy in here. Oh. That would be my friends. Now I gotta go, but you guys should definitely stay.
welcome back and while before i went on the break the last time i made us to understand who man is basically and i said man is a spirit he has a soul and he lives in a body and i was explaining to us the tragedy of man emphasizing on the less importance or emphasizing on the body the body that is going to be put away very soon when somebody die when they say somebody die what actually happened is the spirit and the soul leaves the body and the spirit and the soul return back to his creator who is god and they live in eternal in, in, in eternity either with god or outside of god in hell and this depends on their relationship with the son of god jesus christ so i pray that we begin to consider where we begin to place our emphasis on today are we placing our emphasis on the body that is going to return to the dust or are we begin to place our emphasis on who we really are who is the spirit being god will help us in jesus name i haven't said that i want us to know something serious happened when man was created as i told us man was created as a spirit being in the image of a spirit god amen and after God created man, the first man called Adam, God gave Adam dominion. Just as God had dominion over all things, God gave Adam dominion over this earth, over this world. In fact, Adam was the one who named all the animals. Whatever Adam named, it remained so. God gave Adam power, authority, and dominion over every other thing he created. But unfortunately, Adam committed a treasonable felony. I call it a treasonable felony because he knew, because God told him, of every tree that is in this garden which I place you, you are free to eat. But there is a specific fruit which you are forbidden from eating. And the day you eat of this fruit, that day you will surely die. But unfortunately, Adam disobeyed God. And he ate through the, 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 the leading of his wife, Eve. He ate the fruit God says he should not eat. And just as God said, because God can never lie. Anything God says, it come to pass. Just as God told him, the day you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. He ate the fruit and he died, but he did not die physically. He did not fall to the ground and die immediately. Though he eventually died physically, but he died first spiritually. Because spiritual precedes physical. Everything that happens here in this physical world has already happened in the spirit realm. Because the spirit controls the physical. So Adam died spiritually for disobeying the word of God. And the consequence of that disobedience, which was death setting, he died spiritually by being separated from God. Spiritual death is a separation from the life of God. And Adam, who used to have a relationship with God before, who used to have a rapport with God, God used to come in the cool of the evening and he used to relate with Adam. The same God came that same evening, but Adam ran away and hid himself. And when God called, Adam, Adam, where are you? He said, I heard your voice and I was afraid and I hid myself. And God told him, have you eaten of the food which I said you should not eat? Praise the Lord. And he found himself naked. You see, the glory of God was what was she covering Adam before. When Adam was in right position with God, when sin had not set him. But immediately he sinned. He died spiritually and he became separated from God and from the life. He could no longer face God. And this was what eventually led to his physical death. Because when spiritual death set in, it is just a matter of time, physical death will follow. Praise the Lord. So man was not created basically to die. I know that might shock you. I know some people might struggle with that. But that was the, the truth. Man was created to be like God, to live forever, even on earth. But because of sin, man died spiritually first and then physically later and so adam transferred that death nature that nature of death to all 
the, the, the people that came after him, all the people he gave birth to, all those who came through his lions, he transferred the, 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 the dead nature to them because you can, you can only give what you have. Since he had died spiritually, he was only able to, to transfer that dead nature to all his siblings, to all the people who came after him. So that was how death came into the world. The Bible says, through one man, through one man's sin and disobedience, death reigned from him through all generations, through all humanity. Praise the Lord. And this was how man started dying because they died spiritually first in Adam and every man now was subject to physical death and every man became to die physically too. Praise the Lord. This was the story of how death came in into the world and i want you to know something drastic and something dramatic happened since man was now dying both physically physic physically because he has already died spiritually god never gave up on man god began to send his prophets from time to time to redeem man back to himself to redeem man back to his original position of life amen but all the prophets, they could not perfect this. So man was subject to sacrificing animals and bulls and cows and goats just to atone for their sin, which was for a while. Atonement means coverage. Atonement means just for a while. So after a year, they would come again and offer sacrifice year in, year out. They could not completely wash away the sin of man until a time when the, the, our Lord Jesus Christ has to come he, and he had to come and do the, the, the work finally. He had to come and do what we call remission of sin. Remission means to wash away completely. Remission means to cleanse completely, not to cover, which was atonement. That was what the children of Israel were doing before. But I want you to see something in Colossians 1. Colossians 1 from verse 12. Quickly, I want us to see Colossians 1. From verse 12 praise the Lord Colossians 1 from verse 12 says it says here giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sin praise the lord as i told us it is the blood of our lord jesus christ that brought us back to our original position it brought us redemption it cleanses us from the nature of adam which is the nature of sin and death praise the lord and it translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light which is in our lord jesus christ so anyone who is not saved who does not know our lord jesus christ is still living in the kingdom of darkness which is the kingdom of satan i told us at the beginning of this message that there are two kingdoms the kingdom of god and the kingdom of satan the kingdom of god is the kingdom of light while the kingdom of satan is the kingdom of darkness so i want you to begin to think which kingdom do you belong and i want you to know we live in two worlds even though you are physically living in this physical world you belong to either of these two spiritual kingdoms. And you are living in these two worlds, pari pasu. You are living in these two worlds together. You are living in the physical world, and at the same time, you are living in a spiritual world, which could either be the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Anyone who doesn't know Christ, I want to submit to you, that person is living in the kingdom of darkness. Is, is living in the kingdom of Satan. But there is a good news today. You can be taken out of this kingdom of darkness. You can be translated to the kingdom of light, which is in Christ, the kingdom of God. And I pray this will be your portion. This is just the first series of this teaching. It's a deep teaching. And I will want you to be with us next week, by the grace of God, where we we'll begin to look at how can somebody move from this kingdom of darkness how can someone begin to take advantage of a higher kingdom 
Because the kingdom of God is a higher and a better kingdom. But any man who is born into this world, who has not submitted himself to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ, is living in the kingdom of darkness. Because this was what Adam willed to all humanity. And when a man comes into this world by the meeting of a man and a woman together and is born naturally, automatically he begins to live in this spiritual kingdom called the kingdom of darkness until when he submits himself to our Lord Jesus and he becomes born again. We will be sharing on all this next week. I want you to know people are living in ignorance today. They just feel they are just in this physical world and there is no other world outside of this world. No. They are, they, 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 it's a mislead, it's a, they, are, they are being misled and it is, it, 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 it is a tragedy. And they begin to lay emphasis on this world which they were going to live very soon. And they forget about the higher world which is the spirit world which is where they are going to live for all eternity. So I want you to begin to prioritize even yourself, to begin to prioritize your, your, your action and your decision today. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. And by his grace, we will see you next week. Until then, have a lovely evening. God bless you.